So we have seen rather strange phenomena here on the channel, you know, stuff with cosmology, uh, what do you call it, astronomy, you know, we've seen all kinds of stuff out there in the universe that we can explore that are just fascinating, okay? And today we got something that is also fascinating, we got the black hole star, star that shouldn't exist, I'm surprised this isn't on trending, but uh, this did just drop two hours ago. It's about to hit a million in like a few hours. Because you already know how, you know, in a nutshell, be doing this kind of stuff. Uh, somehow they posted a comment five hours ago, though. So I'm not sure when this video really dropped. Do you think it took them three hours to render? Who knows? Let's get right into it. Black hole stars may have been the largest stars that ever existed. They burned brighter than galaxies and were larger than any star today. So is there a differential between just a regular black hole or and and a black hole star? Like are those a different thing or are those just the same thing? Like is a black hole technically a star? I don't know. Or see. that could ever exist in the future. I know that's a black but hole. But besides though. their scale, what makes them special and weird is that deep inside, they were occupied by Actually, a no, cosmic a parasite, an endlessly hungry black hole. How is that even possible? What? Black hole stars take the weirdness of black holes and go beyond to break everything we know about how stars form and grow. They were only possible during a short window of time in the early universe, but if they existed, they would solve one of the largest mysteries of cosmology. Black Which is? hole stars were excessive anywhere you look at them. The most massive stars today may have about 300 solar masses. A black hole star had up to 10 million solar masses of nearly pure mm -hmm. hydrogen. Let's take a moment to look at what this means visually. The Sun, Wesson, and El Pegasi, the largest star, and Stevenson. finally, the black hole star. What the f- Its scale is beyond words. Over 800,000 times wider than our Sun, 380 times larger than the largest star we know today. And far below its surface is a black hole growing rapidly as it devours billions upon billions of tons of matter per second. Normally, of the star? stars are born from gigantic clouds. And it's still collections huge? Collections of thousands or millions of solar masses of mostly hydrogen. In these clouds, matter starts to accumulate around the densest spots inside. As these spots get denser, their gravitational pull intensifies and they grow faster. Eventually, they generate so much heat and pressure that they ignite fusion reactions and a new star is born. But this puts a limit on their size. Nuclear fusion releases enough radiation energy that the surrounding gas cloud is blown away. The new baby star can't gather more mass. From now on, the star is living on the edge between two forces. Gravity pulling in, trying to squash the star, and radiation created by fusion pushing outwards, trying to blow the star apart. After millions or billions of years, the core runs That's out a, of fuel and animation. the breaks, destroying the star. But black hole stars were very, very different. The beasts of the early universe. I know that's oversimplified for the sake of understanding, because, you know, we are not scientists, right? So what, I mean, I, I, they just do such a good job of explaining the stuff. The beasts universe. of the early universe. hundred million years after the Big Bang. How the do we even know this? Smaller, all the matter in existence was much more concentrated. The universe was much denser and hotter. Dark matter was a dominant player, forming giant structures called dark matter halos. These dark matter halos were so massive that they pulled in and concentrated unimaginably gigantic amounts of hydrogen gas, becoming the birthplaces of the first stars and galaxies. Epic clouds of hydrogen formed, some as massive as 100. So you needed dark matter to be able to create stars in those early days? Well, it's technically dark matter. Dark matter's kind of dead. Doesn't that still happen? I mean, dark matter's kind of like, ah, uh, it's complicated. A million suns, more than the mass of small galaxies. In this unique environment that will never exist again, the enormous gravitational pull of the dark matter halos drew gas into its center and created extremely massive stars. As we said before, when a star is born, it blows away the gas cloud that created it. But these titanic gas clouds in the early universe were so large and massive that even after their birth, more and more gas piled on the newborn star, making it grow to unbelievable proportions. The young star is forced to grow and grow and grow, getting more and more massive, until in some cases, it reaches up to 10 million times the mass of our sun. Crushed by gravity, its core gets hotter and hotter, desperately pushing outwards, trying to blow itself apart, but to no avail. There's too much mass and too much pressure. The balance is impossible to uphold. 
Like a supernova on fast forward, the core gets crushed into a black hole. Bro! Normally, that would be the end. Today, stars go supernova, a black hole forms, and things calm down. But in this case, the star survives its own death. A tremendous explosion rocks the star from the inside, but it's not enough. The star is so large and massive that not even a supernova can destroy it. But now, it has a black hole for a heart. It's tiny, a few tens of kilometers in the center of a thing You're that- You're so massive, not even a supernova could destroy you. But a supernova happens when things collapse in on themselves because of what? Gravity? And the inside cannot push out the, what do you call it, radiation uh, hard enough? Because, you, like, you, we've seen the little animation with the thing pushing out. So when, I'm pretty sure they said, like, the supernova happens when, you know, that force cannot hold on any longer. And then it just kind of collapses in on itself, I'm guessing, because of gravity. And just, you know, yeah. But, like, wouldn't a black hole, since it's eating up its own matter, wouldn't that just be helping gravity? To just ha allow it to collapse in on itself because it's like you know it's consumed it's like not pushing out right like uh... the size of the solar system the monster grows stars are born from ever faster spinning and collapsing gas and so they also spin when a black hole is born from the core of a star it keeps its angular momentum this means that matter that gets drawn in doesn't just fall in a straight line, but instead yeah. begins orbiting the black hole in smaller and smaller circles, going faster and faster. The result is an accretion disk where gas orbits at nearly the speed of light. Only a small amount of gas actually falls in at any given moment. Basically, black holes they put become a lot of food like... on the table and only nibble at it. But so they're like, they're like, they be, they become like the way satellites work, right? Where you can remain a mo you can attain a momentum and a speed that's fast enough so that you don't come crashing into the earth right like how satellites stay out there and they don't come back in is because of their speed they have the perfect speed so that they don't completely just fly off or they don't fall in you know but the matter trapped in the accretion disk doesn't have a good time friction and collisions between particles heated up to temperatures of millions of degrees actively feeding black holes have accretion disks that are incredibly hot and powerful this heat from the disk further restricts how much a black hole can devour, just like the core of stars. The super hot material creates radiation that blows away most of the food within its reach. So even if a black hole had access to as much food as it desired, it can only grow slowly. A black hole embedded inside a black hole star is different. The enormous pressure surrounding it pushes down matter directly into the black hole, overcoming all restrictions on how fast it can consume. This process is so violent and releases so much energy that the accretion disk becomes hotter and releases more radiation pressure than any star core ever could. Enough to push back against the weight of 10 million suns. What? An impossibly dangerous balance has been created. Millions of soda masses pushing in, the angry radiation of a force-fed black hole pushing out. For the next few million years, the black hole star is consumed from within. The black hole grows to thousands of solar masses, and the bigger it gets, the faster it eats, which heats up the star even more and causes it to expand. In its final phase, the black hole star has become over 30 times wider than our solar system, truly the largest star to ever exist in the universe. The intense magnetic fields at its core spew out jets of plasma from the black hole's poles, which pierce through the star and shoot out into space, turning it into a cosmic beacon. It must have been one of the most awe-inducing sights to ever exist in the universe. But this also marks the end. It becomes too stretched, and the accretion disk within too powerful. The parasite destroys its host, blowing it apart. A black hole with the mass of 100,000 suns rips its way out to hunt for new prey, while leaving behind nothing but a star carcass. The supermassive question. If black hole stars exist, so there is a point where the the star cannot hold on any longer, but that's even that. But it's allowed to get to even greater lengths than any star that's not a black hole star, right? It, you're you're allowed more room to breathe because of like the crazy not room to breathe. That's a bad way to say that, but it's like all of the self perpetuating shit that's going on inside of it, right? Like all that radiation that comes about because. There is a black hole eating up all that stuff, which in turn creates radiation, which like, okay, the black hole is pulling it, it pulling stuff in and devouring it, but it's also pushing it out. It's so complicated, man. Like what? That's so crazy. 
What what do you like it, it just makes you it gives you some like really crazy questions about what even is going on. Like I know this is made just in a way that we can understand it, but it's also like okay, try to actually understand the like the craziness of this. Like what even is this universe? What, like look at all, like it's just a whole bunch of like forces just interacting and doing crazy shit and all of a sudden, we come about it. Like, how does that even happen? They could explain one of the greatest mysteries of the universe. The supermassive black holes we see at the center of galaxies are just too big. They shouldn't be possible. Black holes born from regular supernovas can be a few tens of solar masses at most. And because of the process we explained before, they grow slowly after that. If black holes merge, they can form slightly larger black holes of over 100 solar masses. It should take billions and billions of years to make black holes with hundreds of thousands or even millions of solar masses. And yet, we know that some supermassive black holes already had 800 million solar masses only 690 million years after the Big Bang. Black hole stars are a sort of How black you know hole that? cheat code. If they formed very early in our universe and the black holes that emerged from them were thousands of solar masses, then they could be the seeds for supermassive black holes. These seeds could take root in the center of the earliest galaxies, merging with others and drawing in enough matter to grow quickly and reliably. Very soon, we may be able to verify their past existence. The James Webb Space Telescope is turning its sensors to explore the farthest reaches of the universe, looking back in time, back to the early universe that we couldn't see before. So, with luck, we might be able to witness glimpses of these tragic titans in the brief moment between their formation and destruction. Until then, let's do the visual journey again, I'm just not even for fun. Get into that. Stars are big, black hole stars bigger. Ton, where's Ton six one eight? And it's bigger than Ton 618. A long-term project like the James Webb Space Telescope requires some serious budgeting. But even personal finances are a nightmare to manage on your own. <laughs> That's why we want to introduce you to Rocket Money, the sponsor of today's video. Hello, finances. Just as space exploration projects are... I'm gonna end it right there. Jesus Christ, man. I thought you were uh, UI Scotty. Yeah, I mean, there's some... You know, the, uh, yeah, I see certain times that might change. I mean, we used to think Beetlejuice was really big. Uh, Stevenson 618. Yeah, I mean, I've heard either or. that It's either UI or Stevenson. Yeah, it does give you chills. It's just like... Ah, like... It's so... It, I love that it's so comprehensible. I'm not completely lost when I'm watching this. But because they have to simplify it so much, it creates this crazy effect. Wherein, I'm even more lost now. Because it's just like, I understand. But I also don't understand how this could even happen. Like, like how does that even, you know, I'm not even going to get into it, man. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Uh, I was just like really taken aback right there. That's why I didn't say too much. I mean, Jesus Christ, man. These people. How do you even study? How do you even make this animation? <laughs> What are they using? They, they've said what they use. They use, like, Adobe something. But, um, Jesus. Jesus. My God. So talented. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.